Hey guys, is the HEPA filter in Tesla's just marketing hype or does it actually make a big difference? So I wanna put that to the test today. Today is actually a really dirty air day. We have wildfires to the west of us, wildfires to the north of us. There's a haze if you look at the distance, there's smoke, you can really tell. And I, have, I bought this real-time air quality monitor device uh, on Amazon. I'll drop the link below if you're interested. And this basically tells us uh, the PM 2.5 and other various types of pollution in the air. Two PM 2.5 pollution is associated with wildfires. So uh, we're going to take a reading here. We're going to air the cabin with this dirty air. And we're going to just jump in the car and turn on the AC and, and see if it makes a difference or how big of a difference it makes. And then we're going to turn on that famous bioweapon defense mode, which pressurizes the cabin so no exterior unfiltered air comes into the, to the cabin and see if that makes an even bigger difference. And just for fun, then we'll jump into a conventional car with a small cabin air filter and see if, how well that compares. If it's really like a, a selling point to get a Tesla for better air or if you're just safe in any car. So come have a look at this device. Come to the shade. The screen is good, but it's not very bright. Uh, so here we have um, AQI air quality index is at 130, which com com um, I looked it up online. I think it's fairly accurate. And crucially, this PM 2.5 microgram per meter cubed, this is the pollution associated with wildfires. We can even pick up PM 1.0 and also PM 10 pollution, pollutants. And uh, so yeah, I think right now we're at 126. The car has been left open like this for some time, so the air should be equal. So let's jump in and see if it makes a difference. All right, let's roll these windows up. We're gonna just turn on uh, like low fan speed AC, just as you would have it when you're driving. And we'll give it a few minutes to stabilize the reading here. I think I'm fairly confident in the accuracy of this device. Um, I've, I've used it at home. I've, I've measured the air outside. I've measured the air in the house and I've measured the air next to my air purifier in the house. And it does kind of correlate to better results. Maybe even if the absolute numbers are not correct, we're looking for relative differences between like dirty air outside and also uh, cleaner air inside. So you can see here, we're already stabilizing. It went from poor air quality on the air quality index to moderate, and we have 73 micrograms per meter cubed in PM 2.5. I will give it a few minutes, um, but it's already we're already breathing cleaner air in the car. It's been just about five minutes and look at these results. So we've cleaned out almost all of the PM 2.5 uh, pollution in the car. We're at two, we started at 100 and the air quality index is at three. So I'm not even running the bioweapon defense mode. This is just manual climate on 18 degrees Celsius fan speed two. So I think the HEPA filter is actually running all the time. So you don't, you don't necessarily need the bioweapon defense mode um, unless you really need to pressurize the cabin if you're going, maybe if you're driving through like rolling smoke or something, but we're stabilizing at one unit. So basically no pollution and uh, uh, PM 0 0.1, we have one unit, PM 10, one unit. But since we're already here, uh, why not run this bioweapon defense mode for a few minutes, see if we can get it even cleaner. Well, you might be struggling to hear me now. Uh, but what's happening now is the fans are running on pretty much maximum to maintain uh, positive pressure inside the cabin so um, no air are coming in through the seals. All right, it's been a few more minutes. I'm going to just lower the fan so you guys can hear me. So look at this. On bioweapon defense mode, we have air quality index zero, which is pretty much perfect. We have basically zero uh, PM 2.5 pollution. We have no PM 1.0 or PM 10 pollutants in the air. So that's legit. Uh, this is really clean air in here. Uh, all right, let's, let's get the other car now and see how well it can clean the air. Now we're back a few minutes later with a different car. This is about a 10 year old Mercedes with a very conventional HVAC system and a much smaller cabin air filter. And the pollution here is still pretty bad. Uh, come look in the shade here. We have air quality index poor, uh, 120, and our PM 2.5 pollution is at 92 units, which is micrograms per meter cubed. And the other units, also PM 1.0 is at 50, and PM 10 is at 1 of 103. So the conditions are still horrible. 
Uh, so we're not gonna spend too much time outside. Let's jump in and crank the AC. So we just got in where uh, we started the AC and I'm watching the PM 2.5 uh, slowly calm down. We're gonna give it about five minutes like the other Tesla test and see how low we can get it. Hey guys, it's been about five minutes in the test. Uh, at this point in the Tesla, we were already at like very good levels. Uh, PM 2.5 was in the single digits. Here in the Mercedes, uh, an older Mercedes, we have a PM 2.5 is at 33 uh, micrograms. So you could see these are much healthier values than being outside. Both of these are green and good. And we have PM 1.0 at 18 and 10. So much healthier filtered air than being outside, but not as good as the results we saw in the Tesla. Uh, we've been stationary here, and just because we're burning gas, there's exhaust coming out the side, the back of the car. Uh, just so we're not really like recirculating our own pollution into the car. Let's go for a drive for a couple minutes and see if these values decrease as we're moving. Hey guys, we've been driving around for a few more minutes in this car and our PM 2.5 scores have actually stabilized around 26 micrograms per meter cubed, which is better. Uh, but I've noticed as we're driving in this car, our CO2 actually went up into the red because I guess this car is not as good at filtering exhaust from other cars on the road. Uh, compared to the Tesla, so that's very interesting. Regardless what car you have, the air inside is gonna be cleaner than when you're just walking, spending time outside, like this person in the convertible in front of us. Hey guys, we jumped back into the Tesla because after our conventional car had a little bit of a freak out with CO2, spiked to like 1600 parts per million, I wanted to see how the Tesla HEPA system works better at filtering out CO2 exhausts. And I don't know if you could see, but we're in a green. We have 750 parts per million CO2. Our PM 2.5 again is at one microgram per meters cubed. So yeah, this is, uh, I think, this is very convincing evidence to me, at least, that the Tesla HEPA filter system is helping with cleaner air in the cabin. I'm actually very impressed. So yeah, I hope uh, we all learned something today and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.